right, so up to the fourth main cause of uh, men's health, or main issue of men's health, uh, and this is a very, very sad one, I guess, uh, depression and suicide. Um, so I think everyone at some point in their life gets depression. Um, I know that I never had uh, any depression whatsoever until my marriage broke up, really. Um, I was just that sort of person. I would rise above it. I would uh, always maintain a positive attitude and that kind of thing. Uh, and then my marriage broke up and it wasn't, you know, the, the future that I was al I'd always hoped for wasn't going to be, at least not in the form that I hoped it would be. Um, and that made me feel depressed and that made, me, made it hard for me to find work and even apply for work. And, you know, that wasn't a, a great time for me. I, I think I'm through it now. Um, but uh, I was never, hey, Terry, how are you? Uh, I was never suicidal or anything like that. Um, I do know some people who have been, and that's very sad. Um, suicide, suicidal thoughts are, are something that if, if anyone has that, um, please call me. Please find me on Discord or send me an email, hugeass1 at uh, gmail.com um, people who are suicidal are people who want to end the pain but that doesn't mean you have to end your life and the, the right. saddest thing the saddest thing about suicides is that the age group that commits the most suicides is teenagers and um the, the sad thing about that is the teenagers don't know how wonderful life is yet because everyone who's an adult has been a teenager. We know how tough it is being a teenager. You've got to fight with hormones. You've, you're learning about social uh, interactions and how they work. You're trying to find your place on the hierarchy um, and you're trying to find your place in the world. And that's, that's very hard, especially when you haven't learned how to do that yet. Um, and that's that's really tough for a lot of people. And I can understand why you might feel suicidal because to you, with your limited knowledge of, of the way the world is, um, that seems unbearable. And I full, have full empathy for you. But if you're in that situation, let me assure you, as someone who's come out the other side, that there are so many wonderful things in life that are worth hanging around for. You've only just started to experience those and you need to get through it to the other side so that you can see those things and the biggest thing about about that is if you go through with a suicide you take yourself away from us the people who care about you mm -hmm. we're left behind with nothing but sadness about you and we don't want that we want everything you give to us by being around to be around for as long as we can have you. Um, yeah. It's kind of hard to say this without being too emotional. Um, I think it's worthwhile mentioning uh, digital demonic Davros has said that he's this. I've never heard this before. He's twice tried suicide and twice hospitalized. He's had ECT and will always be on medication as he has bipolar type 2 with clinical depression. Um, that's a very brave admission, mate. Thank you for sharing that. Um, we definitely don't want you to disappear. Uh, the way you get into the first, that is magnificent. <laughs> if only for that, you should hang around because <laughs> that is just a, a joy to watch. And, uh, you know, we, we love watching have listening to you and if anyone digital demonic davros has a channel so please subscribe to him if you haven't already um yeah daryl m's been off work for three years with a major depressant disorder um yeah i understand that you have never thought it had happened to you i was in the same situation still fighting it yep keep fighting mate that's uh that's where you show your character that you keep fighting um and yeah it, there's so much I'm, I'm trying to be careful in what i say because i'm not a doctor i'm not a psychologist i'm just saying what i'm i feel from my mm. experience um and yeah I, i'm i don't want to say the wrong thing either but uh 
but I'm hoping that I am encouraging to you guys in, in the words that I have said tonight. Um, yeah, so, yep, Dav, you've, you've fought it for a long time. You're showing a lot of co courage. Good on you. Oh, what's he saying here? That's the thing. You will never understand when thinking of suicide. Everyone is not on your list. It's your fight that separates you. Yep. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And unfortunately, a lot of people that are depressive and suicidal, people say it is the selfish way out if, if you take your own life. A lot of the times that the people committing the act see it as, as uh, themselves as a burden to those around them and, you know, just want to take that away from them. So it, 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 it's a really... And, the, and you're not. You're not a burden. No, we love you anyway. Right. Everyone has I heard problems. a story. Yeah, sorry, mate. Oh, I was just saying, no, everyone has problems and, you know, it, it, talk to someone. There's always someone out there, even if you can't reach you or anyone that you're friends with or myself on Discord at all either. Lifeline or there are support places you can contact, you know. Um, Centrelink have a lot of them. If you if you can get in contact with them, they'll, put you, they'll point you in the right direction. But, yeah, there are yeah. services available. There are services available, but we're all happy for – if you're in that sort of deep down in a trough – uh, all of us are happy for us for you to contact us so that we can talk you through it. Um, I've got to remember, we're not professionals, but you know, at least we're human beings. And uh, I want to relay a story I heard during the week. Um, a friend of mine's uh, got a knock at the door once, and it was the police and a social worker, and she was quite surprised. Um, and apparently, her son had been in a, a group somewhere online saying that he was planning to commit suicide. And somehow they got through to the police and they showed up and they had a chat with him and, and talked him through it. Um, and because of that, because society as a whole, through the police and through the social worker, um, showed that he mattered, that completely turned his world around. And he, has a, he probably wasn't that serious at the time, but he's definitely not serious about it at all now. And he's, you know, he's, he, he has, has issues, has anxiety and things like that. Uh, a lot of people do, uh, but he's not suicidal anymore. And, and that's, that's an awesome thing. Um, you do matter. It, no matter how bad you feel, I know what I, uh, Dad was saying, it's, it's about his own, um, his own approach to it. But you do matter to other people. And if you're sad because you feel you don't matter, that's not true. You do matter. You can contact any of us, you know, Cypher or, or Dav or OK Boomer or, or me or, or anyone else that uh, you can think of, you can see online in this community. I'm sure we're every single one of us are happy to talk to you if, if you have an issue. And we don't charge uh, for therapy either. Well, we're not professionals, so we can't really that's give right. therapy, but at least, at least we can lend an ear. Um. Also, time zones is always an issue, but but we can figure out something, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, all right. Cool. No, oh, Davros, it's you that should... Yeah, no, it should, SDFU. isn't it Davros yeah. that gets the STFU? Yeah, STFU, Davros. Yeah. Anyway, um, so I, ha I thought I found a few vi videos that um, might help people uh, trying to help people going through this sort of thing. Uh, so let's play the first one. Everyone deals with depression in different ways. Some try to handle it by themselves while others get help. We're not telling you that you can fight depression on your own, but there are definitely certain things you can do for yourself that could help massively. Here are 10 self-care ideas that you might want to try. Journaling. Okay, full screen, man. You might be surprised oh, at how big of an impact this can have. Many studies have looked at journaling as a way to fight depression, and the results are very promising. Journaling forces you to reflect, and it helps you get things off your chest, even if you're just admitting things to yourself. Reconnect with a friend. Even if you have no desire to get out and talk to people, you should probably at least make an effort. Researchers have looked at the most effective strategies for dealing with depression, and actively participating in your own social life is a very beneficial tactic. Humans are social animals, so we actually need a community of some kind. Comfort food. Certain foods and diets definitely have a strong effect on depression. 
You could choose to go super healthy, and that definitely helps with your state of mind, but you might be surprised at the antidepressant qualities of various foods, including chocolate, which has serotonin boosting qualities. Tea and even coffee are actually great for fighting depression, and this is backed by numerous studies. Humor. We've all heard that laughter is the best medicine. Well, that might not be too far from the truth. Humor is actually a great way to deal with depression. Watch a funny movie, see a stand-up comedian, do whatever makes you laugh. Laughter releases endorphins and decreases stress hormones, among many other benefits. St. John's Wort We all know that antidepressants are one of the most common ways to deal with depression. These are special medications prescribed by professionals, but some might want something a little more natural. If this is the case, then St. John's Wort is definitely an option. This natural herb has proven effectiveness against mild depression, although it won't do much more for severe cases. Physical activity. Sometimes the simplest solutions are the most effective. Time and time again, studies have shown that regular, rigorous exercise is one of the best ways to fight depression. Exercise releases endorphins, which are natural feel-good chemicals in the body. Seeing the physical changes in our body after a hard workout is a great mood booster as well. There's really no downside to getting a little exercise done, and you're pretty much guaranteed to feel pretty good afterwards. Bibliotherapy Another proven method of dealing with depression is bibliotherapy. Although the word might sound complicated, it's actually pretty simple. Bibliotherapy is the use of books and therapy. This is probably one of the most popular self-guided forms of therapy out there, and it has a great track record. Usually, there is an initial consultation with a professional therapist, and then the patient uses a book to guide themselves along their therapy journey. The book instructs the patient on how to improve their mood, deal with depression, and conquer anxiety. One thing to keep in mind is that it's only recommended for those with mild depressive symptoms. Yoga A few different studies have examined how yoga can help with depression, and they've come to the conclusion that it can be very effective. Some would say that yoga is just another form of exercise, but in truth, it's more than that. Many people describe yoga as a kind of meditation in motion. It can be spiritual in nature, and it can also be very introspective. The results speak for themselves. Meditation. Meditation might just be one of the oldest self-care techniques in history. People have been meditating for thousands of years, and the effects of this practice are well documented. The aim of meditation is to attain inner peace, which makes it a perfect strategy for combating depression. One of the most popular methods for dealing with depression these days is mindfulness, which is a type of meditation which focuses on being of ourselves, our thoughts, and the people around us. Numerous studies have examined the effects of this on depression, and it has proven to be quite effective. Quite simply, it gives us greater appreciation of our own lives. Massage therapy. It's always good to treat yourself to a nice massage, but if you're trying to pursue a lifestyle of self-care, then you might want to seriously consider massage therapy. We left this method until last for a reason. Massage therapy is only loosely linked with decreased depressive symptoms. It won't cure depression, but it will decrease stress levels. And hey, getting massaged is never a bad thing. What are some self-care techniques that you do to fight depression? Let us know in the comments below. Into the second uh, video there, or was that the first one? No, that it seemed was the to first show. One. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, that was the we first one. We can skip over the second one. Oh, maybe That's... the. No, no, because the, the first one dealing with suicidal thoughts is yeah. I must have. I don't know why that's. I think maybe the links were in the wrong order. Oh, maybe, but that was good advice anyway. Um, that uh, how to take care of depression and uh, things you can do about it. Uh, the biggest one to me is exercise. Uh, I take the corgis out for a walk, um, and it's just good to get out. They love it, uh, and I love getting out and. I've got a fair bit of bush around where I am, so I get to enjoy the bush as well. We even got koalas here, so um, it, it's good to get out, get that little bit of exercise. 
Uh, as you get older, you probably don't want to go jogging or anything like that. It's it's not good for the bones and stuff. So um, it's good to just get any sort of exercise. And that releases endorphins, which helps your mood in general. And that helps you on the path back to um, you know getting out of depression. So it's, it's really good. Um, yeah, sorry about that. I The links were in the wrong spot. I, I actually swapped the tabs around by accident. I didn't realize this this was no supposed to be the first video, but we'll still go through it. <laughs> no worries. It's uh, we'll, we'll skip the hidden signs of depression, I think. Uh, it's good to be on the positive. Um, if we move on to the eight tips for dealing with suicidal thoughts, yep. just in case anyone uh, has issues with that at the moment. Everyone has some idea of what their ideal life looks like. Whether it means affording to travel freely, coming home to a loving family, or having all the cats and dogs in the world. But things are getting harder by the second. It can be nearly impossible just getting out of bed in the morning. Why is it so much easier giving into negativity than it is to get out of it? Depression doesn't just weigh down our shoulders. It lies, often telling us that we're not in control of our lives, but we are. Whatever you're going through, know it's not always going to be like this. Here are 8 tips for dealing with suicidal thoughts. 1. Don't spend the night alone. When you're suicidal, it will be tempting to isolate yourself. Do you lock yourself in your room, shut the blinds, and hide underneath your covers? The thing about depression is that the darkness will welcome you, but this only makes you susceptible to believe your negative thoughts. Watch out for your safety, and don't spend the night alone. Call up your family friends, or lover. Tell them how you're feeling. If possible, sleeping over at their place is even better. Having company around can do wonders for you, because it means keeping those bad thoughts at bay, or allowing the new environment to boost your mood. 2. Cut off all ties with toxic people. Research shows that keeping toxic people in your life isn't just stressful, it can actually kill you. One study showed that subjects in negative relationships had a higher risk of developing cardiac problems. If someone is abusing you, physically or emotionally, please call the police for help. Your life might drastically change if your family members or partner are the toxic ones, but realize that they're putting you in more pain than they are supporting you. 3. Make a list of your accomplishments. Hey you. Yeah you. Look at how far you've come. Failure can seem like a big slap in the face, but we often obsess over perfection instead of focusing on what we've achieved. There's a difference. Striving for perfection doesn't allow you to be human. Embrace your flaws, failures, and downfalls as much as you appreciate all the milestones you've reached. Listen closely to what isn't working. Turn those into lessons and grow resilient. 4. Practice positive mantras. These are otherwise known as coping statements. Ending your life will seem like the only option to end your misery, but nothing lasts forever. Practice saying some of these. I will get through this. This is my depression talking, not me. I don't really want to die. I just want the pain to end. Stick these to your mirror, fridge, and carry them wherever you go. Let them be friendly reminders to be kind to yourself. You got this. 5. Find a therapist. Most people shrug this idea off because they might not be able to afford it. But there are options, especially if you're a student. An open mind is what will ultimately get you help. Call your insurance company for any insights they might have. It never hurts to ask your family doctor, too. Networks exist for a reason, and the more professional advice you receive, the faster you can find and work with a professional. 6. If it's urgent, please call the police. This won't necessarily stop your suicidal thoughts, but they will stop you from going through with the act. From here on out, they can take you to the ER where you'll be safe. We hope you never have to resort to this, but want to remind you that help is only one call away. 7. Find out what's hurting you and make changes to it. Do you feel stuck at your dead-end job, tired of the city you're living in, or not sure about what you're studying in school? It's okay to address that you're feeling unhappy, but don't succumb to helplessness. It may take time to find what works for you, but this is why practicing patience is so pivotal. Big projects seem intimidating, but break them up into smaller tasks to make them more approachable. Remember, as you wait for your miracle, never stop working on yourself in the meantime. 8. Whatever you do, please don't lose hope. I know it's easier said than done, but committing suicide will end everything. 
including the amazing days ahead that you won't be alive for. People usually realize too late, while they're in the middle of the act, that every problem they ever faced could have been fixed. So please reconsider your health. You deserve so much more. What do you do to keep going or stay inspired? We want you to know that you're not alone, and we're sending our best wishes your way. For more helpful content, be sure to also subscribe to our channel. Thank you as always for watching. Yeah, when I watched this one, I uh, actually had a few tears because. If you were gonna um, team, you. It's so close to home, really, um, that people who were suicidal. Um, oh, it's hard to put this into words. Um, I've invited Digital Demonic Devros into the chat, so into the um, call, so that uh, we can hear his story as someone who. Uh, went down that path mate tell us about it well it's a it's a lengthy story but i can break it down into sections so uh well starts at birth right i i was born with bilateral club feet uh was operated on at the age of 10 hours every three years i'd go back in for another op to correct my feet um have had other things go wrong with me and uh, my parents divorced when I was like four or five years old uh, things like that you know was uh, technically a ward of the state but in the care of my mother um, and I, I never had a father figure I never had someone to tell me how to do the blokey stuff anyway as I started to find both drugs and alcohol and then start getting into the workforce something was a little off i i thought it may have just been hangovers or drug overs or whatever but then eventually a doctor turned around to me and he said i think you've got depression it sent me for a test uh, it was a psychological test back in 90 shit 94 I think 94 or 95 around then uh, got diagnosed with depression that eventually evolved into a more hypermanic state where I ended up being uh, hospitalized was told I had dysthymia which meant I couldn't let go of memories uh, that then manifested itself into uh, bipolar type 2 which is where you have little manic episodes heavily depressive episodes uh, most of what has to happen is you have to control the depression the mania is actually you leveling out but it feels like a high and this is what people don't understand about when they call someone bipolar right they think they're actually thinking of schizophrenics or people with schizoaffective mm -hmm. disorder right being bipolar doesn't mean you change who you are. You're still that person. You just might be excited. But so you know how when you see a kid and you go, oh, they're hyped up on cordial. Well, that's what happens to an adult when they have a hypermanic state. Uh, I've been on numerous medications. Uh, uh, one of my attempts was with medication. Hi. I took 900 milligrams of Zoloft at 7.30 in the morning. I end up, ended up seeing a counsellor I was talking to who got me into a hospital, spent two weeks at Fullerton Private Hospital here in Adelaide, uh, which uh, trickles into my second hospitalisation. I put myself into hospital. I'd been, let's see, 16 years on and off medications, trying this, trying that. I ended up going to Woodley House at Modbury Hospital here in Adelaide. The attending psychiatrist was a guy who saw me seven years previously. Which was a good thing. And he ended up going, yep, you, you've definitely got clinical depression. You will be on medication for the rest of your life. The only thing you can do is learn coping patterns. Um, le learn to... Uh, focus your mind on one task at a time. 
doing doing more than one thing at a time is what can lead you to confusion. Uh, depression from confusion is one of the hardest. So uh, think about this. Say you've got five jobs you have to do around the house. So you got to pack the dishwasher, mop the floor, fold up the washing, feed the animals, take care of the kids, right? Don't don't try and do them all at once. Wake up, make your coffee, take that five minutes for yourself, then go and feed your animals, then clean the kitchen, then wake the kids up. Then you can sit the hell down and spend time with your kids. Whereas I see I see parents all the time, they're rushing, rushing, oh, I've got to do this, I've got to do that, I've got to do this. No, no, no. Sp step them out. Uh, the, th the thing I have learned mostly from depression, watch, f learn what happens when it's coming. The best way to know that it's coming is you'll feel a shift in yourself you feel an emotional shift uh how could i put it uh you know how when you're at a funeral and there's that one wave that comes over you when you actually are about to bowl your eyes out you you've got to be able to find that for depression and then to be able to tell someone anyone you feel like you're getting depressed or you feel like shit and that's the best one to do. Say, I feel like shit. And someone will say, oh, why do you feel like shit? And then you can explain to them, I feel like shit because I'm remembering about my dad passing away. Or it's the fact that I miss my kids. Or it's the fact that I miss my dog that passed away 15 years ago. But that memory has triggered me to spiral into a depression. And yeah, that's probably the best anything, advice yeah. I can give. So you saw that video about um, eight advices to help with suicidal thoughts do you as someone who's committed tried to commit suicide a couple of times did you think that was all good advice well as i said in what i put in chat you don't care about anyone at that point in time you are that low yeah uh, th think about it like you're euthanizing yourself because you're in that much pain but it's emotional pain it's not physical right uh yeah emotional pain hurts but it, it's it anguish uh a desire to not be you you feel uh abandoned and that's that's what people don't understand is that feeling of abandonment even though you're not that's how you feel yeah and that that's that's why i hate it <laughs> And I'm, I'm actually going to bring this into flat earth. When they say trust your senses, no, because your senses trick the shit out of you. Senses in your brain tell you, oh, you're all alone. You're worthless. You're a piece of shit. No one wants you around anymore. Why don't you kill yourself? You'll feel better. Yeah, people say with depression not to follow the advice of the voice in your head because it's not the voice you should be listening to. There's been described you've got two sides of yourself one is the side that you present to the public and the other side is the one that is always you the real you when you're by yourself and yeah people don't see that other side and that's the one that you focus more on and that's the one mm -hmm. that yeah is the one you shouldn't be listening to try to try to try to listen to the the other voice that's underneath that voice telling you to do these horrible things and, and try to listen to it more than possible if you can and I know that can be hard sometimes. It can be hard to even hear that second voice under the the one that is, is overpowering every, all all of your thoughts and feelings and emotions. It's, yeah, try to listen to the mm. second voice. It's usually the good one. Yeah, well, last time I had to deal with the feeling of depression was back in May. Back in May, I went on a 20-minute tirade at right the hand. 24 hours later, my mother-in-law passed away. Right. So what had happened, uh, my partner had woke up. They said they had given her the needle, which was to help her pass away without pain. Uh, so, of course, I got up in case, like, 
because they said it could be anywhere from an hour to 24 yeah. hours before she passes. So I said, okay, I'll stay up. So I jump into Jen Pandas and they're down in a different room. I'm like, oh, it's no holds barred. Right. I go in, I hear right the hand say something. I all, all of a sudden just jump straight at him, unleashing all my anguish, all my uh, feelings of hatred right now because I know someone's about to pass away. And guess what? It felt fucking awesome. Punching bags are good therapy for if you can get one of those or so, just something to yell at. Yeah, but I got him, like yeah. That you deserve it. Yeah. Yeah, but I got him to admit he's a liar and that he thinks that he doesn't think the earth's flat. So that, yeah, that was a good video, that one too. Yeah, from that um eight things to help with suicidal thoughts, the the main thing I got was uh, concentrate on your achievements. Mm-hmm. Um and and you know, beating right the hand, getting him to, him to admit that, that's an achievement, isn't it? It is an achievement. Yeah. Well yeah. that's the thing. I, I'm I'm one of the People go, oh, Devros is triggered. No shit, you dick. Right? But that's a persona I've taken on. It's a, it, it's actually a coping mechanism for me. Right? I use it to unleash. I use it to get my frustration out. I feel better after I've had a, a yelling. Like, even if it's just one line, I feel better and then I calm. And, but the worst, the worst is people go, Oh, why are you so triggered? I go, do you not know who I am? Jeez, Have you not met that get a reputation? <laughs> Actually, I watched your first video uh, during the week, and, and it's the person you are there is completely different to the person you are now. That you've come a long way. Oh, yes, yes. I meant to reply to that today, but uh, yeah. Well, see, this is the thing, right? It was. I mean, I'd been watching it for a year before I jumped into YouTube as a creator or a, a voice on the interwebs. And I thought it would be good for me to get into this. And then I realized it's one of the best things I've done. Keeps you busy. Yeah, yeah, gives you an outlet to yell at people, idiots. Unfortunately, well, the that's outlet, unfortunate, but I yeah. I think the outlet's the most important bit because yeah. you're, you're giving – righteous, um, I don't know, vitriol towards idiots who deserve it, you know. It's not like they don't deserve the being pointed out that they're being fools So, because they're, yeah. they're, they're willfully being fools. Yeah, and that's worse than being a ignorant idiot. They're being willfully ignorant and idiotic at the same time, and yeah. that's terrible. And I just want to acknowledge there's a lot of people in chat saying that um, – They've had all sorts of uh, issues and, you know, uh, suicide attempts and things like that. And, uh, yeah, I just want to validate all those guys. That, yeah, we, I can't acknowledge them all, but it looks like it's just normal for people to deal with a whole lot of crap, basically. Mm. Uh, life's and like 20, that. Yeah, and 2020 it, sucks balls. It does. It makes everything harder, doesn't it? <laughs> well, that's the thing. The only difference between gravity and madness just takes a little push great quote that yeah. it is oh by the way madness is sometimes the emergency exit too <laughs> oh yes yeah. uh whale lord um you're a younger man have you had any experience with people with suicidal thoughts and and depression in, in teenagers in particular because oh. Like I said earlier, that uh, that to me is a, is a bigger tragedy because they've got so much of life ahead. Oh, yeah. Um, damn. Yeah. Uh, you don't I have to talk about it if you don't want to. No, no, no. I'm, I'll, I'll, this is the whole point of it. I'm on here. So. Yeah. Uh, well, with the depression part, I've had, I have friends who are, well, they're jolly folks, but they also... They also seem like they're hiding all their inner pains and stuff. I've had a couple of friends who've lost people important to them and they just were completely out of it for the next few days. I, and I, my brother is like that. He's, he's got depression, anxiety, he's got all those phobias and 
conditions and he's he just shuts himself off in his room most times. Yeah, it's not good, is it? Yeah. And he's and he's uh, he's he's gone at his arms a couple of times. He's got bandages mm. covering up so he because he's ashamed of it, I guess. But he's really he's he's he's, he's hopefully doing well. He's seeing all the doctors and whatnot. And also because oh. he's got the transgender thing going on, he's that's kind of I don't know. It, it brings it there. It brings it back a lot more. Yeah. And yeah, particularly hard for tr people transitioning, I guess. Yeah. Because that's Cause that's hard in itself. Yeah. There's there's just complete cockbags at school who's saying, "Oh, you know, it's a boy. You yeah, you just yeah, you know, the boy." You're... It pisses yes, me off, and it, it it yeah. I just want. I just. I just. He needs to know that there's people here that are helping him, who want to help him, who are there for him. But he's he shuts those people out, even when it counts. Which makes it harder to help him. Yeah. Which makes it harder to help him. Yeah. Yeah, well, welcome, welcome to what depression does to people. Yeah, yeah, God. You shut yourself off. You don't talk. You don't communicate. You don't take phone calls. You don't go outside. You don't respond to letters or emails or anything like that. And that's where people forget it. You're shutting yourself out for a reason. You don't ha You don't know the reason, but you are. So of the five points that uh, are main... Uh, men's health issues, I think this is the most important. Uh, what's a way of breaking through that shutting out, Davros? What do you think? A lot of the time it'll take a friend. Normally, you... you look, uh, because people with depression and uh, same with schizophrenics and people with schizoaffective disorders and uh, borderline personality disorder, they don't like telling anyone Because they're scared of the ridicule. Same, same as if you were transgender or if you were coming out as gay or you're coming out as bisexual or pansexual or, or any of those things. Coming out uh, for your sexuality is the same as coming out for your mental health. There's a stigma involved. And the only way you're going to get out of that is if a friend taps you on the shoulder and says, hey, yeah. I understand. Not I know what you're going through because everyone's mental health status is different. Someone who can come up and say, I understand. Or someone who passes by and says, are you okay? It, it, yes. And that, that, uh, there is a World Health Organization day called Are You Okay Day, where they encourage you to say to everyone that you know, are you okay? And genuinely, you know, if they, if they aren't, sit down and have a talk to them. And I, I don't think it should just be a single day. I think you should try to do that you know as often as you possibly can yeah. with your friends and, and oh, family and loved ones absolutely the idea is is to raise awareness of doing yep. that um, yeah exactly having a day for it so yeah did you are you going to say something well lord oh yeah i i do that with my friends and family often because i'm quite a worry ward and i see them mm. just zoning out so i just instinctively go and ask are you okay do you need to talk or you know yeah yeah very difficult subject to talk about for anyone yeah. i mean yeah as davros said and anyone has had anything to do with uh, women it. when women say i'm fine you know that's when they're not mm. fine you know they're not yeah oh yeah. well tr tr try this on for size my partner's currently going through menopause and i have an autistic son so yeah, try being me for an hour. <laughs> Sounds like fun. <laughs> well, it is. <laughs> Think about this. I've I've got one who <laughs> I've got one who doesn't know how to go to the toilet, and I've got another one who tells me he doesn't know how to go to the toilet. Which is which? 
You just see? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. We're getting a, a few more, I guess you call them testimonials in the chat as well. And uh, yeah, guys, um, I don't know where some of you are, but if, uh, if uh, some of us can help, then um, let, us, uh, let us know, you know. Um, like Dave, I'm, uh, I've, I've, you know, you haven't touched someone for eight months. Wow, that's amazing. I don't know where you are, but uh, I'm sure we can arrange someone to say, come along and say hi. Hang on, my nemesis is in the damn chat. <laughs> oh yes, which one? <laughs> the one who did my uh, intro and in... oh, yeah, I became his twenty sixth yes, subscriber. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Yes, this is an interesting subject. It's also, I think, a very important subject. I mean, when normally we have a lot of fun on this this live stream. We've had two before, and they were great fun. Uh, this one's a little bit more serious, and we're not getting as many viewers as a result. But uh, I think for the people who are viewing it, it's going to be a bit more important for for us. So, yeah, but you got more thumbs than watching, which is even better. Well, I guess so. Yeah. Well, maybe that means people say they like it, and then they bug it off. <laughs> oh. Maybe, yeah, but that's the thing, right? Other people are ashamed to hear the truth. Oh, wow. Did I just sound like a fluff? <laughs> <laughs> You've been hanging around them too long, haven't you? But the thing is, the truth about mental health, right? Yeah. E everyone. Mm. They, everyone like, has they, a mental health issue, yeah. Yeah, they do. Of Whether it's a, a stress, an anxiety, a sadness. Right. We all get a little sad sometimes. Yeah. Right. It's part of being human. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. But there are other people who are sad all the fucking time. And that's depression. That's when you're in, like, sadness isn't depression. Right. No. It can lead to but, it, but it's not the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. But it's when you feel like you're going to cry for no reason. Uh, this is, this is the biggest this is the biggest issue, and this is why I went ballistic at someone the other week who tried to say that oh, uh, me mental health is on the uh, mental health issues are on the rise, blah blah blah. And I turned around to that idiot and I said, "No, it's just people are fucking noticing it because they're closer at the moment." And also, uh, it's more socially acceptable to talk about it now, I think, than it was ten years yeah, ago, for example. Absolutely. Yeah, but with 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 the coof, right? What's happened is people are at home more, people are noticing problems, and now they're talking about it and seeing the doctors. So, of course, the numbers for mental health illness have risen, but that's only on paper. Those mental health problems were already there. Mm -hmm. It's just people are now noticing it. And yeah. that's why I said to him, I said, you don't understand, mate. What you just said is completely wrong. All it is is that the medical professionals know that this person's got a mental illness now, but Prior to this pandemic, I guarantee you, uh, like it would have slipped under the radar. It, yeah, it would have just gone under the radar. But that well, mental the health problem was cases. still there. Yeah. Yep, and that's what got my goat about him. It's like, dude, think about it. The entire US was locked down. Three hundred and twenty something million people. You think some families weren't going to notice if old Cletus was a little bit screwy because he didn't get his milk? So, yeah yeah mental health mental illness is always going to be prevalent you know why because we have an electrochemical thing in our brain that fucks up from time to time we have a brain um that's you know well how do you, you have know? a brain you have mental illness how do you know have you seen it were you there i actually have seen a scan of it but yeah <laughs> Oh, CGI, yeah, good one. Well, perhaps, yes. <laughs> well, by definition, it is CGI, yes. Yeah. Yes. Ah. Oh, well, we haven't had many doctor, laughs. Is he? Oh, we haven't had okay. many laughs in here, so it's good to have a couple. Um, yeah, so so guys, I'm hearing lots of testimonies in the uh, chat, so if you can reach out to someone who can give you some help, please do. Uh, I'm sure everyone in here wants to um, you know, make things better for other people. Hit me uh, up if you can find me. DM me yeah. on Discord. Uh, you can yeah. find me on Facebook. Uh, yeah, fuck and it. My name is David Cooley. You can find me on Facebook. I'm good. easy to find. NASA Black Site as well. Yeah, in the NASA Go. Black Site. 
go either to there. the YouTube channel or the Discord channel. Uh, I, I'm look if anyone out there, yeah, I know there's only a few watching, but if there's anyone out there that needs some advice on what they can do, not what they need to do, I, I look, I, I can point you in that direction, or I can just listen to you rant and rave about how shit life is. Because look, life's shit. Life yeah, will find a way to good. shit on you. <laughs> sometimes it's good just to say it, isn't it? Yeah. But that helps that's the thing. Wonderfully. Like, uh, even even Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and that say, yeah, we've got all, we've got all this money, but life still finds a way to shit on us. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, stock goes down or a uh, show gets cancelled on Amazon or Elon well, Musk. That one gets sick. Yeah. yeah, or Elon Musk loses a rocket or, you know, something like that it every, everyone has a bad day some people just have consistent bad days yeah and they're the people that need the most help exactly yeah uh tony regimes just said in the uk they started calm the campaign against living miserably and i love the the sentiment of that idea yeah but uh, how can you do that in the uk depression. well <laughs> yes they don't have any weather do they well they have weather but not good weather <laughs> Or well, maybe three days a year to have. It's weather. always wet yeah. weather. Yeah, I actually quite like the rain, to be honest. But yeah, it, it's always a, a sense of new life growing as a result of rain. But other just people see it as that, depressing. Yeah, I'm just hoping that puts some smiles on some faces by saying that. Well, yeah, because that's what but we that's want. We want thing. smiles from faces. If this stream stops at least one person from getting close to suicide, then it's been worthwhile. That's for sure. Oh, look, it's more got it. than much to pay for it. So, you know, Daryl's got it on the head. Doesn't care about your race, your creed or your color. Yeah. If it wants to fuck with you, it will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a and you can't thing, catch it. depression. Yeah. It's not a, it's not a virus or a disease like they say it is. It's an illness, but you can't catch this illness. It's forged in your brain. Yeah, you can you can do things that cause it to happen, such as alcoholism, drug use, uh, bad sexual promiscuity, uh, doing dangerous things, messing yourself up. But ultimately, something misfires in your brain, bam, you end up with a serotonin issue or a dopamine issue or even a testosterone issue or a thyroidism Thyroidism can cause depression. Yeah. Because you've got an irregular heartbeat, which uh, then means that there's something misfiring in your brain because your heart's not firing properly. Your brain doesn't know what to do, and it cracks the shits at you. So there's nothing left to do but cue the corgi.